Who's wrong and who's wronger? In this corner, followed by Millions James, the exploding unicorn breakaway. And in that corner, ignored by Millions Steve Dash, Rinko Levi. Hey everybody, all you hombres and cowgirls out there. Howdy ma'am, howdy sirs. I'm Steve Olivas and that feller over there, that lily-livered, yellow-bellied uh, seersucker. I don't even know how to end that sentence. That'd be James Breakwell and welcome to Wrong and Wronger and you have tuned into the podcast that everybody's been talking about. James, how are you doing tonight? I am scarred by that intro. Just for the record, I never have any idea what he's going to do. Because if I did, I wouldn't be here right now. I would be off doing anything other than recording this podcast. So on behalf of Steve and, and our eight listeners, I apologize to everyone who just accidentally listened to that. Well, I usually send Breakwell a picture of my hat ahead of time. And James, you said you didn't even look at it this week. You were too disgusted. You know, I opened it and I looked at it and I just have Steve blindness. Like, I couldn't tell you what I saw. It's kind of like how when you see, like, somebody committing a crime and the police officer asks you to, like, draw a sketch and you can't describe them. That's exactly what happened. The picture entered and left my mind. I could wow. not for a million dollars now describe what hat you're wearing. And that's for the best. <laughs> But I'm guessing it's a cowboy hat. And I swear I did look at it like 30 seconds ago. I already forgot. <laughs> well, this is the podcast where we argue about things that matter a lot more than my headgear. <laughs> and they're things that people have an opinion about but rarely express for fear of drawing the ire of the other folks sitting around them on the public bus. And James, what are we going to debate today? Because this is one that I have quite a strong opinion about. It is. I was reading down the list of possible topics, and I got nothing, nothing, nothing. Then, and boom, big reaction Ooh. from Steve. So this is this is the one he's fired up about. It's rice versus mashed potatoes. What's the ultimate side? Ooh, rice versus mashed potatoes. But before we get there, James, we got fan mail, and we got like the grooviest kind of fan mail. Except it started off a little bit shaky for me because. <laughs> Now, I, I described this to you before we started recording, but I, I couldn't show it to you, of course. But I received an envelope that was sort of half torn open, and this thing fell out into my hand when I pulled everything out of my post office box. And I thought for sure it was a pipe bomb, and I thought, <laughs> all right, well. <laughs> Your time has come, whatever. <laughs> you know, yeah, good run. <laughs> this is the day I die, so Breakwell finally gets his way, and I don't know who he hired to send me a pipe bomb, but I popped it open, and in it is an entire roll of Guam quarters. <laughs> Someone sent me a five bucks worth of Guam quarters, and I thought, wow, this is what happens when my address is public information out on the internet. But, James, we got plenty. And uh, the listener said that they sent this roll when I had to tape the Guam quarter to the back of my phone because <laughs> they felt bad and I needed backups. But this is the kind of loyal fan base that we draw. Well, now I feel like you have to mark the real Guam quarter of fate in some ways. I don't want to get it getting mixed in with some imitator. Like, I appreciate the gesture, and that's fine for, like, our low-def feed on YouTube to trick people. But, like, I want the real deal. I want justice coming from the original quarter. <laughs> well, they're brand new. Like, these wow. are uncirculated quarters. So they're shiny, and I don't even know if I should tear the package you, open. I would feel guilt. How do you even get that many Guam quarters? Like, can you go up to the bank and be like, I want quarters. No, no. Guam quarters, like make those poor tellers like go dig through the bin and find them for you. Like, how does this happen? <laughs> I don't know, but they did add the note. Uh, Kenneth Fisher is the guy's name who sent it. Uh -oh. And he added the note that it was actually very hard to find these. So I don't really? know if he picked through them like by hand. <laughs> I haven't opened it up to see if they're all Guam quarters. I assume they are, but I don't know. It uh, came from Kenneth Fisher, and I just wow. wanted to say his name twice because <laughs> this is the kind of great fan base we've got. Yes, please send us money. Nothing but money. No pipe bombs. <laughs> <laughs> money in a pipe bomb, yeah. So I, I guess I could turn this into a bong or something, but I've never seen a case like that, so it freaked me out a little bit when it first tumbled out. But good things inside. They're like me. Kind of rough on the outside, but really cool on the inside. 
thought you were going to say disappointing and gross on the inside, but hey, what? each their own. <laughs> Well, James, now that we're on the thread of disappointing and gross, I do want to say we begin these podcasts with a compliment to each other. And I know that you've got to kind of slow your momentum in one direction and then build steam going the other direction. But do you have a compliment locked and loaded and waited? See, locked and loaded goes with the whole cowboy theme. Waiting for me. I have as close to a real compliment for you as I'm ever going to get. Believe it or oh, not. Boy. I've heard this before, by the way. Believe it or not, I subscribe to your other podcast, The Commute. And really? I listen to the episodes. So I would like to compliment you for persevering <laughs> through the adversity of not having me on there with you. Like, I can tell going in there, <laughs> you're doing your best to make it work. And it, it's a fine podcast, but it's just not an absolutely awesome podcast because you're missing me. And yet you soldier on and very seldom even mention my name, but I know that every second I'm not there, it just kills you inside. So I would like to compliment you for hiding that pain and pushing through. Good on you, Steve. James, it takes a big man to compliment himself. And <laughs> <laughs> I want to say you have outshined any of your previous attempts with that one. I want to compliment you at finding a way to compliment yourself through almost complimenting me. Thank that you. is kind of, we have hit meta level with compliments yes. here. And you should sleep pretty soundly tonight knowing that that one ricocheted right off me and landed back in your lap. Ricochet, another cowboy-themed metaphor. Feeling pretty good. I'm thinking about just canceling the rest of this podcast and going and doing a victory lap or maybe a victory <laughs> nap. That would be more of my wheelhouse. A victory nap! <laughs> That's, did you just coin that right there on the spot? I, I did. I'm going to go trademark it right after this. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to make my living off of that. <laughs> That's pretty good. Now, you know, this, right. is, this is the point we're going to have a thousand people go, like, actually, a victory nap's the thing on the internet. I did not Google search that beforehand. Maybe there's a thousand victory naps out there. Please please don't message me about this. Well, if there's not, someone else is going to grab that uh, that URL so that they own <laughs> it in case it you ever gone. try to get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll pay 15 bucks for it and charge you five grand. That's the yeah. way the business works. It all is. right. Well, we haven't hit the 10-minute mark yet of all of our witty wow. repartee. Not a cowboy word, by the way. I don't know how often repartee was used in the Old West, but I'm guessing probably south of 10. Yeah, probably. All right, so I have the original Guam Quarter of Fate. Guam, also not a term that was bantied about very often in the Old West, nor did a lot of cowboys visit Guam, nor could they find it on a map, nor, frankly, could I probably find it on a map, but I have the quarter <laughs> and I will flip it. What do the two sides represent for you, James? All right, Braywell? heads I'm arguing rice, tails I'm arguing mashed potatoes. Heads is rice, tails is mashed potatoes, yes. it is up. Oh no, it's heads! <laughs> oh, you get rice. Oh, wow. Man. You were you were that fired up about rice. Oh, well, I, well, why? I, well, why it's not so, anymore. It, it's amazing. It's an amazing side. And I think to, to, to understand why, you just have to look at how long we've been eating it. Like Europeans really just <laughs> domesticated the potato and figured out how to eat it a few hundred years ago. Like, boy, people are starving. We got to figure out something to eat. I guess we'll just dig this thing up out of the dirt, find a variety that's bigger, find a variety that's less poisonous because most natural potatoes are mildly poisonous. <laughs> And what? then we're going to force everybody. I am not. This is, I, I'm a, I'm a, I, well, my other major was history. And this is like a big part of European history, figuring out how to master the potato. But huh. rice, rice has been there for thousands of years, you know, in China and the East and all over there. I mean, they have, they have cultivated it and perfected it. Uh, you know, China was like the largest stable empire for, for the, you know, thousands of years and it's because of rice they had this stable crop that the harder you work the more it yields and we still eat it today it's 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 the perfect side you can buy like a specialty rice cooker you don't buy a specialty mashed potato cooker nobody cares about that there's no there's no restaurants that are known for their sides of mashed potatoes but there are oh, so many restaurants with excellent sides you. of rice yeah so really i mean mashed potatoes are an afterthought but rice rice <clears> are like a key component of the main event rice is where it's at. James, I'm no expert in history, but Correct. I do know a thing or two about <laughs> horticulture. A, I know how to pronounce horticulture. Good for you. B, I know not to emphasize the first syllable too hard when you're saying the word horticulture. And three, I do know a little bit about rice and how difficult it is to actually grow rice. You know what you need to grow a potato? You need earth. You know what you need to grow rice? You need a swamp. 
Yes. I don't know if you eat swamp rat or swamp gator <laughs> or poisonous <laughs> copperhead cottonmouth snake, but why would you eat something that comes out of a swamp? Do you know what you have to do to harvest rice? You get like a bunch of people in those weird saucer hats that are barefoot stomping <laughs> through the rice swamps and harvesting it. You're getting all of the mold and fungus and bacteria growing between their toes. Everything that swims out from under their toenails gets caught up in that rice. I don't want anything to do with that. What you got on a potato is Mother Earth. You dust that sucker off, you smash it down, and you have the perfect food to build. You can create the Devil's Tower in Wyoming if you want to be Richard <laughs> Dreyfus in a very famous movie, the reference of which will be lost on you for a long time. Close you Encounters this. of the Third Kind? Oh my God! <laughs> 1977! I can't believe you came up with that one. I have never seen that movie, but it is parodied everywhere. You've never seen Close Encounters of the Third Kind? No, I have not. But I knew your reference because that's the only part of that movie that has been saved and carried on in the great, greater cultural zeitgeist. What in tar nation? <laughs> See what I did again there? I'm awesome. Was... Anyway, with the potato, you can mold it, you can sculpt it, you can craft it, you can create little canals for the gravy to go through, you can mix, mix corn in it, you can slop it on top of your pork chops or your chicken fried steak. Rice hat, I'm sorry, pota <laughs> mashed potatoes have the ultimate flexibility. How is it that with all of these things, I end up arguing your point at the end of my point? It's not that is always some kind right. of Freudian thing. <laughs> <laughs> but all kids love mashed potatoes. How many of your kids ask for rice at the supper table? Probably none of them because you may never have rice. Rice is hard to make, too. You got to get it boiled right. You don't want it to get crusty on the bottom or on the sides. If you, It has like a very narrow window of perfection. And if you don't hit it, it's just not rice. It's either mealy kind of potato-y rice or else it gets like crunchy kernel-y rice. Now, mashed potatoes are perfect every time. They're kind of like Steve Olivas, James gross <laughs> all around <laughs> i see okay but uh, they're nothing like steve olivas uh my kids actually do not enjoy mashed potatoes they don't like rice either my kids don't eat anything that you have to understand that That's <laughs> they like cheese children. pizza they do like cheese pizza they gobble that stuff down they uh but so they make rice cookers though i mean it, you toss the rice in you turn the button and then you wait that's all you have to do they make instant rice um it, it it's good stuff it's I, I, for a second, I forgot which side I was arguing. I almost started arguing. I almost pulled. I almost pulled the steam. I just stopped myself and tread my words carefully. But I don't know why you would care if it comes out of the water. I don't know how coming out of a swamp is any better than coming out of the dirt. I mean, you get sugar cane out of the water. You get you get cranberries out of the water. It's not. It's not a big deal. Does, I don't uh, care. I don't care where it's coming from. When I get eat a steak, I don't go, boy. I bet the process of making the steak was really messy. Like I don't care. I don't care how they mangled up that cow. I don't care what the swamp looked like or the rice paddy or whatever. For the record, it's not a swamp. It's an artificial area of water that's carefully cultivated and carefully uh, maintained. And it it feeds a large population of the or a portion of the world. If you look at the numbers of people who are sustained by potatoes as a staple of their diet today and the number of people sustained by rice as a staple of their diet rice would blow potatoes away can you name one country that gets most of its calories from potatoes today i don't think you yep. can that was rhetorical, Every Steve. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. I sometimes have trouble reading those social cues. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you can you can try to think of one, but you won't. But but rice, oh. I bet I bet you I bet you could name I bet you could name five countries off the top of your head that that, that get rice as a main staple of their diet. So rice you know is keeping people alive. <laughs> I am still going. You just had a twenty minute monologue. Let me oh, get a few points God, in here. You can't tell time either. Oh, you're usually you're so good at reading my cues, but here every time I try to take a breath, you're jumping in. I know you're really fired up, and I think you just feel bad that I have rice and you don't. But yeah, I, I, rice is keeping the world alive, and potatoes are just kind of an interesting side dish. So there's there's really no argument there. You have James, the floor, Steve. Go. My my butt just unplugged my phone, so what? I had to take a minute there and dig the plug out from underneath me and then get it back in the outlet. I can't even tell you the position I'm in right now physically because Gumby would be proud of what I'm doing back here. We so are professionals, Carrie folks. Struck. Very professional. We got <laughs> paid $5. in my house. <laughs> house with no furniture but $5 worth of quarters. We are we are good to go. <laughs> this, this is the dream, people. <laughs>
You save your pennies, kids. Someday you can be wearing a stupid cowboy hat talking to a guy that you can't stand. But the one thing that all those countries have in common, Mr. Six Foot Four, is the average height of a male is about five foot two. So what potatoes do is it gives bulk and energy and life to human beings. And that's what we need a little bit more of in our world. I firmly disagree. Your your grasp of science is tenuous at best, but I can see you're out of arguments. I'm just going to roll the dice and let people declare that I've won. However, Ooh, nice I'm, transition. I'm hey, looking. by the way, yes, go I ahead. I won last week. Not last week, but the week before that. I went back and looked. Did you? Yeah. Well, pretty, I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, now I, ah, I just. You, James, I'm having all kinds of problems on this. What thing. what what topic did you win? Tell me the topic you won. You can't do it. You can't tell me the topic. You didn't win. <laughs> I won the poll, not the topic. How dare you? <laughs> what about this most recent week? You got crushed this most recent week. Yes. yes I don't even did. know what we argued last week. <laughs> leaf, rank versus leaf blower. I ran circles around you. It was a oh, blowout. Oh, it was zoo versus museum. That was the one before, wasn't it? Uh, maybe. Yeah, I definitely won that one, too. So, good talk. Yeah, you have no idea. All right. Mr. Holier Than Thou. You couldn't even remember the topic. All right. <laughs> I'm going to roll. If you want to vote for me and rice and sustained life on planet Earth, vote for 17. If you want to vote... Foot two. If you want to vote for Steve and his quirky nobody cares potatoes, vote for <laughs> 28... And if you want to vote, throw away your vote for the random option, vote for 12. Oh, Terry Bradshaw. Nice. All right. Well, there you have it. We kept you a little overtime again today because Breakwell gets long-winded and caught up in the malifluence <laughs> of his own voice. But stick around next week. You might hear me talk once in a while. And until then, this is Steve, the Cowboy Olivas, like John Bon Jovi and Richie Sambora. I am Wanted Alive, and he is James Breakwell, Wanted Dead, and the Exploding Unicorn. Until next week, this is Olivas for Breakwell saying thanks for watching, thanks for listening, thanks for your continued financial support of the program <laughs> <laughs> and remember two wrongs can make a right